Hello, everybody. Well, I think it's about time we started. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak and for the law firm I work for, Dentons, to, to sponsor the event. And secondly, it's, it's very good to see so many people I, I meet in Tashkent here in London today. Um, my presentation is going to be on um, legislative regulatory reform that is creating a framework to support investment. Um, I thought we should try and se separate up two issues. The first is to stimulate interest, and the second is actually to secure investment. And I think the, the presentations we've heard so far have strongly suggested that you know, we, we've clearly moved through that first phase in that you know, interest in Uzbekistan has been aroused. This meeting is a, a testimony to it. There are meetings almost every month in, in New York, London, Tashkent, where similar groups uh, of potential investors uh, listen to, to presentations and learn about opportunities in Uzbekistan. Um, from a lawyer's perspective, of course, there is uh, a second phase, which is the implementation phase, which is what we have to work with, the, the coal phase of negotiations. And that's about structuring deals, creating confidence, uh, making deals bankable. So I think this, this presentation is going to be more on, on that and what is being done and what is needed to be done going forward. Um, I mean, we've heard a lot about the ambition, particularly in terms of raising FDI. We've heard a lot about the macro factors that are in Uzbekistan's favor. It's de demographics, the fact that six, seven hundred thousand people are leaving school every year, the population's growing. Is it 70% of the population are under 30? Um, it's location, uh, it's natural resources. Uh, we've heard about the strong fundamentals, um, the large f foreign exchange reserves, the fact that there's very low government and private sector debt. And of course, we've heard about some of the, the measures the government's introduced to stimulate both economic growth and, and investment. So there's incredible ambition and there's a real foundation for that ambition to, to develop. Um, in terms of the rhetoric of reform, uh, the government has uh, published a roadmap for the next three years where it has very ambitious social and economic goals that it wants to deliver. Uh, it's about accelerating the transition to market economy. It's about reducing the um, involvement of the state in the economy, um, transforming, transforming the government's role, um, and also improving social protection and, and the rights and access of citizens to, to, to economic and social security. Um, a number of the key sort of foundation stones have been introduced, uh, particularly when it comes to currency liberalization, um, capital control or ending capital control. This has really been, I guess, the primary focus uh, of the government has been to convince investors um, that you can purchase and sell foreign currency for import-export, you can repatriate profit, uh, you can repay loans, other operations. This was, of course, a huge stumbling block uh, prior to the adoption of these, these decrees that um, companies had to, when they uh, transferred revenue out of Uzbekistan, or when they receive foreign earnings, half of it had to be uh, transferred into Uzbek sum, sum. Uh, So you obviously had a, a grey economy because companies were trying to retain earnings in hard currency, not declare them, uh, in order not to lose uh, their value because there was, as everyone knows, there was a difference in the formal exchange rate and the informal exchange rate. Um, in March of this year, cross-border capital controls were eliminated, so it's now possible to fully repatriate capital gains um, made in Uzbekistan. This, of course, is, is critical for an investor. Um, if you add in the, the, the reform of capital markets, then you can see that there are a number of concerted efforts are being taken to, to convert idle savings into investment. And I guess that, that was the takeaway from the last panel, that there, there are savings in Uzbekistan. Uh, the question is, how do you get them into, into the capital market? How do you get them into the economy? How do you get people to deposit their money in banks? Um, 
How do you create demand, institutional investors like pension funds and insurance funds? Um, that there is money there. The question is uh, designing and implementing the instruments to actually get it to work. Obviously, a lot of focus has been put on the, the country's profile on foreign capital markets. Uh, we, we heard about the, the Eurobond issue uh, in February of this year. Uh, Fitch and, and Moody's um, issued credit ratings, um, which have contributed to the country's overall reputation on global financial markets. Um, we heard about how one of the state-owned banks is going to, to issue Eurobond. So there seems to be real appetite for Uzbek debt. Um, Uzbekistan has a very, very good record in terms of repaying debt. But of course, the real issue is um, converting the interest in debt into interest into equity and investment. Um, and that, I think, is, is it's more complicated, obviously, because whilst there is a obvious upside, there is also risks, perceived risks, that, that need to be resolved. I mean, you read a lot of figures about where Uzbekistan is this year in terms of foreign direct investment. I mean, our impression working with investors coming from uh, a number of parts of the world is that it probably hasn't reached the levels that the government would have hoped it to have reached. Um, and we hear clients um, talk about the barriers that they feel still exist. Um, well, I think one of the issues is there hasn't really been a consistent policy so far, far towards investment. Um, and there are a lack of mechanisms, particularly when the state is involved, uh, to actually uh, structure and finalize a, a deal. Um, there is very different understandings as to the requirements involved in a, in a large project, into the cost of a large project, the, the capex uh, the government has and the capex the investor have can be significantly different. Uh, and where you need to have basically a, a commercial and political agreement, then obviously it becomes complicated. Th th this isn't particular to Uzbekistan. This is true of any jurisdiction. Um, I think the other issue, um, and I think someone hinted uh, about this in the first panel, is that because we're in a very dynamic environment in terms of the, the appetite of the Uzbek government to get investment in, uh, we also see a lot of dynamism in the regulatory environment. Um, a lot of new decrees are adopted, some legislation is adopted, sometimes there are contradictions between the two. Um, and perhaps more importantly, uh, a lot of projects we work on, um, they're not really based on a legislative foundation. Uh, the president has to issue a project-specific decree in order to sort of cover up the cracks that we exist, we, we identify as existing. So the, the confidence the investor draws is from, yes, the appetite of the government, yes, the improvement in legislation, but without that project-specific decree, um, the investment probably wouldn't go ahead. Um, this is, this is, I remember working in Russia 20 years ago. Everything was done by UKAS. Uh, so it, this is very, very similar to similar economies going through the same process. But I think when you listen to clients, and particularly ones who are going to invest large amounts of money in infrastructure, they need to see more than uh, a project decree. Uh, so the hard work really has to now be done in terms of developing the, the legislative framework rather than... Um, have expressions of, of desire from, from, from the top. You know, that having been said, if, if, you, if you look at the starting point, then the, the progress that's been made in the last three years is, is, is absolutely remarkable. Um, I found these key barriers from a, a report uh, issued three, four years ago. And yeah, the first three, uh, impossibility of repatriating money, uncertainty as to exchange rate, limited access to capital, these are all being solved or in the process of being solved. I think some of the other ones are still works in progress. So the confidence in the judicial system and the protection of ownership rights, you know, this is fundamental. Um, as lawyers, we are asked by our clients very quickly, 
you know, if, if everything goes to hell um, and we have to go to dispute resolution, can we, can we have international arbitration? Great. Uh, but then the second question is, can we get that judgment recognized and enforced in, in Uzbekistan? Um, so it, it, I think it's critical that the judicial system shows its ability to process not just disputes it, it, it itself is resolving, but to, to review um, arbitration decisions made and implement them in, in accordance with New York Convention. Um, you only need two or three stories of companies not being able to get their judgments recognized and enforced, and then all the hard work you've done is basically soiled. It's like dropping you know, a drop of ink into a glass of milk. Very quickly it becomes gray. So that, that's clearly, I think, a, a, a key, key, key thing that needs to be worked with. Um, equal market access to all participants. Um, you know, obviously, at the moment, most of the economy is owned and run by the state. Uh, and the process of privatization is not going to be totally smooth. It never is anywhere, in, in, anywhere in Central Eastern Europe. Um, I think for foreign investors, uh, when they look at the opportunities presented by privatization, they've got to be confident that if they are spending time and money uh, in that process, that they have the same access as maybe local groups. Um, it's also very important for them to know that uh, the assets that are being privatized are properly audited, that everything is transparent, that the corporate governance and management structures are clear, that if they're buying a minority stake, then they're going to get uh, real influence so that they can use their know-how and finances to tr transform those organizations. So th the balance between local vested interest and foreign investors is, is obviously a critical, critical ingredient. I mean, I'm, this slide repeats a lot of what I've said that the legislative and regulatory base has to create confidence, it has to be transparent, it has to remove barriers. Um, and rather than focus on project-specific subsidies, um, there has to be uh, overall conditions that all investors can refer to, access, and understand as part of their financial model. Um, Every client we have wants to have special tax treatment. They want preferences. They want holidays. Again, it's normal, but you, you, you create uh, a sense of frustration because some companies can't get the, the fiscal benefits they, they wanted, and you create a sense of unfairness because they know some of their competitors have got those, those fiscal benefits. So. What, what is being done and what is needed to be done? Well, obviously, the tax reform is, is, is being implemented. As we saw, uh, Deputy uh, Minister Kudratov uh, elaborated on the various tax reforms that are now being implemented. That's, that's critical. Um, banking sector reform. We heard the panel talk about the need to secure equal and widespread access to the banking sector. Um, the utilization of modern financial instruments in the, in the national currency, that's, that's key. Um, supporting the development of a functioning and liquid domestic capital market, I mean, that's a major focus of, of Mr. Nazirov's agency. Um, implementing corporate governance rules, standards, you know, changing the listing rules to encourage free, free float. The capital market, as we heard in Tashkent 10 days ago, is critical because it provides an opportunity for um, citizens of the country to choose. You know, do we put our money in banks or do we put our money in stocks and shares? And do we invest in our country's future? Um, so that, I think, is a, a critical piece and obviously a piece that's being worked on with, with, with real gusto and determination. Um, then if we move away from the sort of the, 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 the individual investors from the funds um, we work with, I mean, a lot of the funds we work with I guess one of the things that is inhibiting them at the moment is the fact that they, they're not clear about exit options. Um, and that's why the domestic capital market is critical, because 
if you're investing in a growing medium-sized enterprise, and there are many brilliant growing medium-sized enterprises in the retail consumer sector uh, in Uzbekistan, then if you've got a three to five year horizon, you want to know that there is an exit option, you know, ideally through an IPO on the local capital market. You want to know that that company can raise uh, debt as well from the local capital market to, to, to supplement your investment. So um, I think the, the portfolio investors, that for them is a, is a main focus at the moment. When it comes to the sort of strategic investors and FDI, I mean, the company's interested in mineral resources, oil, gas, infrastructure. Uh, the key question is about the implementation of public-private partnerships. Now, public-private partnerships, I mean, I guess a lot of you have worked with them. These are not copy-and-paste solutions. I mean, um, to transfer risk effectively from the public sector to the private sector, that, that is a... That is a complex process, and there has to be a real transfer of risk, because otherwise it just doesn't work. Um, Uzbekistan you know, has passed a law on PPPs. It's now looking at uh, specific regulations for different sectors. You can't use you know, one, one um, s approach for all sectors. You've got healthcare, you've got education. You need to adopt different regulations, and that, that again, is, is a work in process. And in conclusion, I mean, if, as we hope and expect, um, these efforts that are being made are rewarded, if a, if a more systematic framework emerges from you know, what is a period of intense um, work, then tax reform can you know, lead to huge gains, both in terms of revenue for the state uh, and with the reduction of a tax burden, uh, creates more disposable income for, for companies and individuals. Um, similarly, you know, private-public partnerships uh, can lead to a real increase in FDI, uh, regional integration, because you tend to have investment in infrastructure, and it reduces the cost of doing business. Um, capital markets, as we've already said, provide a source of funding for national companies and an in opportunity for investment for domestic saving. And then finally, as we heard in the banking sector session, um, consumer and corporate levels of credit are low, so uh, the development of the financial sector is expected to go ahead of the GDP, um, and hopefully with, with, with the adoption of these innovative solutions, you'll see a profitable and efficient financial sector emerge. So yeah, we, we are, we've passed the stimulating interest, and we're into that period where you have to secure the investment, and. I think if you, if you, as I said, if you take the starting point, then uh, real progress and has been made. Thank you.